Maximo Friday yes. night here in the studios of New Frontier Television. And you know how it is. It is yes. Ladies, Ladies Lounge. Lounge. I mean, this is the how where we excite you, mm -hmm. we inform you. Yes, we you. I'm yes. Gonna give you gist. Yes. Sitting ladies, <laughs> yeah, on New Frontier Television. Of course. Good to you join us again today. My name is Adeola Adibuki. I'm here also. I'm for sure. Alpha Labi. It's been a wonderful week. And, uh, for she she day. <laughs> so we are again another episode. We are here to talk to Gist and to educate ourselves as we always do on New Frontiers Television. Just stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Don't you go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, um, okay. Since the month started, we've been talking about etiquette, etiquette, etiquette. 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 Okay. See, the way you keep saying etiquette, etiquette, etiquette. etiquette. It's more oh, than etiquette. Etiquette. <laughs> You're saying with the um, moral etiquette, mm. moving on to social, social etiquette. etiquette. And today, today, what are we talking about? Corporate etiquette. <laughs> Okay, now we got feedback from last week's episode, and uh, okay, the interesting thing is, I love the fact that a lot of our viewers are disagreeing. Yes. So someone said I should tell you that they will continue to wear their heels at the parties and yes. put their slippers. slippers. Yes, they will carry. They will wear slippers. Okay, there's no problem. <laughs> it's yours. It's your I thing. Love, I love the fact that people are disagreeing and agreeing on. Stops like that, and it, it gives it encourages us to keep doing more. So, today so is about corporate etiquette, right? After this time out, you're still watching Ladies Lounge here in the studios of New Frontiers Television. <laughs> and because, like we said earlier, we're talking about corporate etiquette, etiquette okay? yes. And what do we mean by corporate etiquette? Those are the um rules the moral rules you're expected to follow while you're at work, work. i mean in uh, corporate rules. gatherings in your organization i mean the way you maintain doc decorum yes. the way you remain official the way you associate with work. your colleagues yes uh, the corporate society the corporate uh space yes. is your work space and yes. there are rules that guides the workplace mm -hmm. you might not i mean all of these rules might not necessarily be in your appointment letter i mean because then some people will tell you it's not written in mind but yes. these are we've told you Another that etiquettes to are kind of like uh, the morally right thing to do yes. like people just, it's not like uh, it's, there's a law if you don't do it you're going to be killed sentenced to death no but no. those are the morally uh, of course, they will put things. it in your letter not to trim chewing gum whenever you're in yeah. office, office <laughs> premises. So there are some things you need you to need know. You need to know that you're not supposed to do yes. while at work. So we're beginning to take them one after the other. Mm. Mm. The first thing I'm going to talk about is, okay, okay. now I will not be gender specific. Yes. But then I know, <laughs> that, I know that it's more common among one gender than the other. Yes. Drinking in the office space yes now um the thing is sometimes people get overwhelmed with work and feel like the best way to relax the best way to yes. get through the day is to take alcohol mm -hmm. it is a no no do not i mean it's not reasonable for you to drink in the office space and why now you know that there are times alcohol as a way of making you tipsy yes. and then you begin to hack the ways you're not supposed to hack so the office space at least between the officers yeah 8 a.m to 4 p.m it's the no drinking zone i know that there's some workspaces where if you are doing overtime i mean you're not attending to customer and clients some yeah. uh, some yeah. allow i mean they allow the some people i mean they do that for offices that allow yeah. but on a normal day please between that working hour you are not yeah, supposed to take alcohol. Uh, when we're talking about alcohol, and there are some situations whereby I want to ask so. <laughs> uh, it's true. Because the discussion and we have to entertain ourselves mm -hmm. at the same time. What if the person believes, okay, I know what to take, that I'll not be tipsy, that I'll, I'll be fine. And The danger in that is if a client is coming okay. to your office, and then sees a bottle mm. of alcohol in front of you. What is the, the, the cup? See, the, the truth is you can hide <laughs> the cup, you can hide the bottles. And this this interesting thing, I've seen it happen in office spaces. When you see people carry red disposable cup, 
Uh, please, don't ask them <laughs> for a drink. Don't. Uh, don't ask them for a drink. Uh, hmm. uh, you actually see them carrying Pepsi. Uh, don't it might not see. be what is inside. Don't ask people for a drink. Other than they carry flask. Yes. All around. Like so, what I was actually joking when I said what if they will <laughs> not because it's normal. Even if you are not so you are not supposed to take that, even in some gathering aside the corporate one. But today you know we are talking about corporate, corporate. etiquette. See, come to think of it, maybe I'm the one that approach you in the morning because some people take it in the morning, some people take it in fact to seminars because they want to maybe they are shy or mm -hmm. they they can actually face crowd what if you just speak to me or walk up to me and i can smell it smell it in just your slap breath. on your face and moreover some will tell you okay what about smoking to start with because uh, it goes together um those uh the bhc said smokers are liable to die young mm -hmm. but that's not my problem here the problem here is that you will smell even if you go to the toilet to smoke and come back to your desk or whatever you are going to smell i perceive smell a lot so what do you expect a person coming to your office maybe for the first time or a visitor or a client how would you let the person feel about you so it's good to do things in a normal way let, don't let us drink well, don't, please, please please and it's then when you, when you go for office um parties yes. and you go for seminars you go for luncheons and all of that dinners picnics don't get drunk Yes. So the the, uh, the thing is, while um, while a lot of people are feel a lot of people are against alcohol, there are people will feel like okay, uh, there's really no big deal in alcohol. Now, if you know that you want to take, yes. and then people take red wine, um, uh, yeah, based on the health, health benefits and all of that, but don't ever get drunk. I mean, people have a habit of oh, it's in surplus. It's, yeah. I'm not the one paying. Mm so i can it's free. Uh, it's free i can take as much as possible <laughs> oh don't get drunk it's a slap on your face yes. when you, then you start misbehaving mm -hmm. in the midst of your colleagues please it's a, a whole, you can lose your job <laughs> you know your your subordinates or your co-colleagues are packing you or just and then, um, you are vomiting all over the place you please. Vomiting, yes, yes. Please and go. you know <laughs> social media is outside please don't let them post <laughs> you and more moreover you need to i think this is very necessary it happens mostly in corporate affairs okay you don't barge into people's office you don't uh. barge you have to knock like what uh jella used to tell me she would say you knock after 60 seconds you have to wait for 60 seconds and if the person could not respond then you can open that means that person might have prepared for your coming and i might have heard you knock I'm very sure you can't be sleeping in your office. Definitely. So definitely, if you, even if you are sleeping, that 60 seconds will wake you up and you, you quickly get tidy up. But it's not a normal thing. It's not, it's not part of the norms to be sleeping at the office. Yes. But it's good to knock. Don't just barge into their cubicle or on to their office. Don't just barge into people's office. Yes. I mean, a lot of us, I mean, we have this a bit of, I, yes, call, uh, it, yeah, I call it sea finish. Yes. Uh, is it not my own cool? He's my uh, friend no. now. Then you just open the door and you barge in. No. The truth, uh, the office, um, for especially for people who have personal offices, it's, uh, it's still a private space. Even though it's a work environment, it's mm. still their private space. space. So you knock, then you wait for your response. Yes. If you don't get to the response in 60 seconds, then you open the door. Well, who you are expected to ask, even, you know, there's sometimes maybe the person is carried away and could not offer you a seat. Then you and ask. You, you ask, please, can I have my seat? Or can I sit? Please, you just have yes. to ask. Because so many things, we are watch films a lot that like maybe the seat is even meant for another person. Okay. <laughs> and you just, and you, jumped about, yeah, you jumped on and it. And they now tell you, excuse me, please, um, somebody yes. else was sitting there. Somebody, it's somebody sit. Maybe that person actually walked into the toilet and you're sitting oh. already. And it will not be proper for you, the person, to ask you to get up. So you have to maintain yes. and respect yourself whenever you're in your office. And mm. moreover, mm. this thing is most important in corporate affairs, especially uh, both hierarchy and those people under them. Because what I say, why I'm saying this is because I watched a film recently and the boss is having problem because. He could not tag his files as a secretary, as a boss, as anything, as a, as a social secretary, affairs, whatever, whatsoever the post you owed him. You have to tag your files. 
you don't just pack your files. You don't. You have to tag it. This one belongs to this, this, this company. This one is skinny con affair. You have to know what and what the file is meant for. It's not that when the boss said, okay, for example, my producer and I said, Funsha gets me um, P and G file, and I said disturbing the table, scattering everywhere. It's, mm. uh, it's unprofessional. We should just stop that. It's yes, not good. I mean, I've been organized is one yes. of the you have greatest to organize very, skills you should very have. Well. I mean, yes. you should have as an employee. You should be organized. And it's part of dre dressing is part of it. Uh, well, yeah, in all of it, I mean, you, you're not expected yes. to... Organize yourself. Time. You don't You don't have to wear revealing clothes to the office. No. Uh, no you have to dress Okay, yes, of course. That takes us to Dressing. dressing the office space is not a fashion uh field yes except you work in a fashion company with a company that deals with fashion and style yeah then you know that that is what you do but yes. then if you're in a corporate organization that has nothing to do with fashion and style it is not a place for a fashion display yes so starting with uh what you put on you're not expected to put on revealing clothes there of course we all know i mean uh, well i expect that everybody knows that there are some clothes that you know that oh these are for the offices and you know that these yeah. ones are casuals and they are not even going to get to the office even on casual fridays i mean almost every office mm -hmm. does casual fridays but you know that these ones are not even going to get to the office on a casual friday so you know what to wear and what not to wear and then to the makeup as a lady if you're going to walk moderate makeup yes we call it back to school makeup you you can you can do very makeups. simple you can do makeups to see if you're going for a photo shoot or you're going for a party or what have you no the moderate makeup is okay it's office i mean you're going to the office you're going to be uh, interacting with people interacting with clients and don't forget first impression lasts yes. longer so I, I don't want to be talking to you as a client and get distracted <laughs> by your face or by what you're putting yes, on. No. I mean, you I, know, I mean, there's some um, situation where you buy, maybe you are the a receptionist and a guy just gets to, to, to the reception yeah, uh -huh. to make some inquiries. And when he got there, he was carried away. And we were asking, maybe probably you putting on much makeup and, and revealing oh, yeah, clothes. Revealing. Yes, that person was not, uh, he's not asking you that. Oh, madam, please, and you are now saying, sir, what do you want? Can I help you? And he's saying, ah, I forgot why I'm here, sir, <laughs> because of the distraction. <laughs> yes, it happens. You yeah, say, okay, you I'm coming, I'm coming, let me come back. And, and the person has to go back to the car and then. reboot his brain, please. <laughs> then again, speaking of um, dressing in corporate places, for you visiting a corporate place, mm -hmm. now let me talk to you. Something happened once. I mean, a guy was going to visit somebody in an office. Mm-hmm. And then this guy was wearing a shorts, like a real short shorts. Okay. Not a nika. Like some, I mean, it looked like boxers to me. Okay, maybe it's uh, above the knee. It's above the knee, and and then he's he now wore a round neck, a blinks, cross. But I mean, the, the guy came to, and he walked in with swag. Like he's looking for so. And he's not a model. It's not, I don't even care. <laughs> well, the company does not deal with models. Mm, yes. It's not a modeling agency. You're coming to a corporate world. Like, it's, so, it's somewhere where serious businesses are being conducted. And yes. you're coming to look for someone and you're dressed. And you're dressed like, like, I mean, like you're in your house. Yes. And uh, interestingly, I got to see the person. And then the way I looked at the person, it took, it took some form of maturity for me to and get the person in a serious conversation because the first the, f the first impression i had of the person is yes i mean you're not serious yes like, you're, and you're uh, not serious yes that's what we are talking though we said don't dress too or uh, overdress and what she's trying to tell us more is that don't you don't dress, dress. <laughs> on the, don't don't dress shabbily. it's an office don't forget i we said earlier on we said first impression lasts longer you have to create a good impression because the next time i'm coming and i met of the first time i'm coming I, mean, I met somebody she just spoke of and the second time even if she's dressing in the way my producer is dressing now definitely you are not going to attend to me yeah you because, are not because going i just to have the opinion that you because are. Uh, yes you are, I, I believe it's another way around you just pretending i want to see you in your normal form your normal. now let's move on to the next thing i mean there's this thing we 
do we do and we feel like uh, i mean it's normal but then i've seen it cause mm. trouble yes in offices politics yes oh mm. my please it's, you stop Nobody playing politics cares about your political affiliation mm -hmm. uh, playing politics is another different thing yes now, i'm talking about talking politics in office yes see we've seen uh, now let's move from offices now we've seen the way politics political parties have caused rancor mm -hmm. on social media i mean people will people will threaten each other on social media meet each other in real life and beat each other up because mm. of different political yes. opinions now you bring just in like a, a football it's yeah it's just like football banters now you bring in a political discussion into an office an office that has nothing to do it's not you are not in a uh, so so and so party campaign office mm. it's not it's not a campaign office you people are not running campaign yes, uh pr4 no. and you are talking politics in the office it can cause problem yes. you know you're not supposed to fight in office spaces yes. and you're not supposed to be loud extremely loud yes. in office spaces so now you are engaging Talk your now maybe the person you are engaging does not like the political party you are supporting yes then the two of you now start, then yes. you start everybody wants to prove a point everybody wants to prove that oh my party is better than your party that then you happens strong. mostly among men and also the way around uh among ladies we talked about celebrities and some other things mm -hmm. and started fighting over it come to think of it why are we fighting they don't even know about it so we don't it's it doesn't know what we it. exist uh, yes they don't even know maybe we exist so we have to think about it before we could talk and it's it's office space don't let us bring a personal issue or aggression or anything to come and affect our work and don't forget the other way around being being playing politics again could be blaming your other staffs mm. who crashed this thing who spoiled this thing ah i'm not there is is the other that i left in the office please if you're out of the game you're out of the game stop mentioning names yeah i, I um, sir i don't know anything about it thank you quiet stop mentioning names mm. you have to man maintain your respect when you don't know anything about something don't anky panky and stop talking about your family issues if you have problem with your family issues speak to the person you believe you can speak with don't make don't make it an office problem mm. like don't make it an office problem yeah. there are people who have the habit of they come in, in the morning and then all you have to do is look at their faces. Yes. Then you know they're having a, ah, a you bad know they are having a bad moment. And then you cannot talk to them. Yes, you have because to remove. One, if you talk to them, see the anger they are bringing from their husbands, wife, children, they will dump it on you. And then you become the receiver of whatever it is that has happened in the family. Then it, see all of these things have a way of creating enmity in yes. the office space. Now I back in the days I used to have an employer who would tell me. Whatever problems you're having, once you get to the entrance of the office, drop it there. Yeah. Then come work. When you're done with your work, if you still feel like those problems are still worth it, then when you are going, yes. you can pick the problems from the door and yes. take it back to where you're bringing it from. But then don't bring your family issues. Don't yes. bring your personal lifestyle into the yes. office. It was, we see people uh, we see people make mistakes on files because they're having problems with their boyfriends. Yes. Then it's reflecting on the work they are supposed to do and then people begin to tell you yes. no you don't know what i'm going through at home you don't know what my uh, what i'm what my children are doing to me yes. so you cannot tell me to do this the see the office is paying you to work yes and if you're working you should work yes so don't 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 allow your personal issues interfere with whatever it is yes. you're doing and don't forget after coming back on the show we're still going for break we will be talking more and more about corporate, corporate etiquette. etiquette so stay <laughs> tuned and don't touch it Back to your show, we're still here, uh, and I hope you're there also. Today, don't forget, we're still talking about corporate etiquette. etiquette. And we've talked and talked for, for some minutes ago, but now we're moving on to time. You have to be time conscious when it comes to corporate affairs. Even in anything, they do say time is money and time is life. 
people. Mm. Time is very important in anything you drink. Don't start putting, I don't want to talk about it, but I must talk about it. Don't start saying, okay, instead of you working on up to, into your office majestically, some do start running up with their slippers, holding their ears. That's why I say I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> holding their ears, running to the receptionist. Ah, please, where will I sign? Where will I sign today? Looking for pen. You're not organized. Because of the time, yeah. you've already, already exhausted your time. Time is very important in anything you're doing, whatsoever you're doing. And when we are talking about etiquette, we can never, in all etiquette, we can never skip when it comes to telephone. Um, let's, let's dwell on time because I, I also have something to say about timing. Time. Now, uh, beyond getting late to work and all mm. of this, now there's this thing that people do. They say an office meeting is 11 o'clock. Yes. And then you get to the point of meeting. Is that 11 that you now stop from your cubicle? <laughs> you are now walking to the meeting spot. It's it African is time. wrong. It's African time. We are Nigerians. <laughs> I mean, there's, there, shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything like African time. If they say this meeting starts 11, you're expected to be seated five minutes, at least five minutes before the sign. If you, are, if you, if you give a client an appointment and say, Okay, we meet by 11. You had, the client is expected to be there at least five minutes before the time because you're expected to kick start 11, exactly. It's just like when you organize seminars, you organize uh, uh, dinners and all of that, and you say, oh, okay, this seminar will begin 11. Now, let's say everybody starts coming 11. Okay. Um, if that means they are not going to begin by 11, then they have to wait till 11.05, 11.10, 11.15, and a lot of people troop in, no. So when, when we're talking about the concept of time in corporate world, ensure that you're always there at least five minutes before that is what we mean by being That's on right. time not being there at the dots of at the dots of slows things down be of there course. five minutes before the, the event the in and moreover as you're saying we have a lot of etiquette even if you had to take like three months doing etiquette <laughs> there's so much in stock and don't forget we talked about time just now mm -hmm. your time you don't kill your time because you can never get it back. Everything, uh, when you kill the time and whatever you've done, it will, be, it will be a past and you have to face it in the future. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, we have to tidy up our environment. Yep. Some people will tell you the boss and the organization is paying for the cleaners. Okay. That doesn't mean you should litter your office. That doesn't mean your table should be scattered. You have to tidy up the necessary place. If possible, get, in fact, there's nothing bad in you getting a deodorant for your office. And, oh, I don't think body spray is also a sin. Tidying up yourself. Body spray is not a sin. You can use PEV. If you're not allergic to smell, mm -hmm. you can tidy up the necessary things. You can even get a small basket. Um, I mean, that's dustbin. disposable be a mm -hmm. dustbin. You can just be emptying it every day even if the cleaner is there don't give yourself much hard work and what we were saying the other time is about aggression some people because of the family because of their how do i put it because of their health they bring aggressions to the office and by so doing they forgot to tidy up the place they mm -hmm. would tell you see i have so many things running that through my know. mind please please don't let us do that all right, and of course, also also talking talking about that. Um, sometimes, especially in a create in the creative world, Word. I know people do this a lot. When you're writing, and there's then you want to squeeze paper, you want to tear yes, paper, you want maybe to you're not shred, getting it right. Please always use the bin. Don't create unnecessary work for the uh, mm -hmm. office assistants. I mean, they are humans as well. Yes. So be in their good book. I mean, dump it in the bin and uh, move on with whatever it is you're doing. That takes us to the next thing. Um, sometimes in office, yes. Say, so, well, I mean, people might have different ideas to how this should operate, but then we are not HR experts, so mm -hmm. I don't know if it's right or wrong. Then I'm, I'm not so familiar. I'm not a, a, a labor employer or what have you. But then I know that these things happen. Now, maybe we have ten staffs in this office, and then I feel like uh, someone has done so well. And the boss wants to compensate that person who have done so, so well. well. If you are being compensated, I mean, it's not a declared compensation. Mm. The boss calls you to the office and feel like, oh, Funshu, I've seen the way you work hard. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you this 10,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. Keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Compensations are confidential. Yes. Don't go around. Then Funshaw leaves the boss office and comes to me. It ah, happens mostly Diola, among, among we ladies. Diola, uh, did Oga call you today? And I said, no, Oga did not call me. Ah, wait, till he called me and gave are me 10,000. Are you 10, sure Oga is not planning And, gave me, and then you're like, ah, yeah. and he gave me 10,000. No, you don't have to say it is confidential. You are going to create more problems by exposing whatever yes. conversation you get in confidential to the public. It is a no, no. And see, people, some of these things that we don't take note of, people lose their jobs. Once your boss knows can that, they can't, they can't trust, they can't you, trust with you secrets. Of course. So then they feel like you're no longer important. So don't share confidential information with your colleagues. As long as that information is not a general information, it was told to you in confidence, do not go about sharing it with you. Moreover, why should I disclose something that happened to me when it's not necessary? When so, some conversation doesn't involve third party and the person telling you others or doing others mm -hmm. action to you did not ask you to inform anyone. Mm -hmm. So why are you broadcasting it? Are you <laughs> not a journalist? You're not a broadcaster. Why must you <laughs> inform? <laughs> I, 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 yes, now you have to. There's some uh, secret kept is very, 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 yeah, very exactly. good. You have to keep secret to yourself. Like, that's why I like rolling up with men at times. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Because, mm. because they are... They're they are always supporting women. Oh, yes. Women. Don't, it's not I'm not supporting you guys, but we have to grow up. I used to tell people, I said, you have to grow up. You have to, you have to of come course, up. Of course, we should. I mean, you if you are working, we expect that you are an adult. So you yes, you have to, to be, because you will be responsible for your actions. Yes. I'm moving yeah. on from that to... Uh, um. <laughs> See, this thing eh, is not of us that are comedians. Yes. There are some jokes that... You don't crack. See, you make some jokes and they are totally off. Yes. You get some people's nerves. And then these days, every, people have a lot of issues. Though. That's why Jela used to tell you, watch moods before you talk. Ah, See, these days, that, especially during this COVID era, people are plenty issues <laughs> they are dealing with. That's why you just tell somebody something and the person will give you, yes. as in, give you dirty slap. While it's wrong for people to be violent, then we've seen people outburst of anger. And then yes. you're wondering, ah, this thing, I could have said it last year, you will not be angry. It's not the person, it's the situation that's yes. making the person react. So, oh, that's just so it. Don't, make, don't make unnecessary humor. Then you then, now you want to make jokes, you're making jokes with people's gender, people's religion, the people's stature. stature, people's color and all of that. You're making personal jokes and you're like a big head. You have flat nose. You have, no, don't see. The truth is, you can, you can determine, you can determine what you want to say, but you can't determine how people react to what you want to say. Maybe somebody is actually depressed at home and he had to add more salt to his to our food mm -hmm. and as a guy you always eat from our food whenever she's around maybe she's not having a marital problem and she just said see i can't eat just take this food and when you tasted it there is too salty the next thing you say ah this thing no oh, ah, is bad though this thing and that person might react maybe what that's what the, the guy said i mean is i always said at home that really upset are uh, due to the work stress and something and you two you are adding salt upon our uh, injury <laughs> so you just have to calm down rich because there's a way of saying uh, there's, there's an actual way of saying this thing is salty uh, what type of salt are you using because i think you've changed from the former one you were using before so there's a way of saying it that you'll be it yes don't upset don't step on people's toes because some guys outside there some colleagues some boss can actually make you to be toeless yes when you step their toes you might think it's a normal things i used to do with my boss and that would be that would mark its might mark the end of you, your you just do that one thing and it breaks off yes that's the just the end shape. of it so and then uh, hmm. you people your clients will come to the office and then you are having conversations like you are having talks with your clients in the office no, um, I mean, you're having talks with your colleagues. Yes. Ignoring the client. It's yes. a no, no, no. Yes. So that's just it. When we were talking about you having talk with your colleagues 
and leaving the client. Do not forget, when there's no money in an organization or when the organization is not there, you can never be there. Because if the organization do not, uh, would not establish the organization, you will never come and write any application. So in an organization, the client brings money. For example, you viewers, you know, you subscribe, you talk, you you bring, uh, what, what should we Adver say, adverts mm -hmm. and more of So you are the one feeding us. So your client is actually feeding you. Don't ignore. Whatever they want to say, let them say it. Some people will tell you, I know that guy, I know that lady. That's how she used to be. If she will come and waste your time. Don't worry. Let her vomit the rubbish she was about to vomit to you that you started ignoring the person. So you have to put full concentration. When it's break time, you can use it the way you like. But don't forget, the corporate etiquette should be applied. Of course. And then again, you, you see your colleagues every time. There's time for you to catch to up. Talk. So, uh, you can actually chat on WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Interestingly, Nollywood has exposed, uh, I won't talk about the particular sector, that whenever you get there, let people be dying. They're always chit chatting, chit chatting, yes. and then they will ignore what they're supposed to. Please, Apart let's, from let's, chatting, let's do better. You know, some, they will place their phone and be watching watching movies. movies please, please. Even on their system, when so, you have a lot <laughs> of works to do. And the, the next thing you, you do is to, uh, uh, to put the contract aside, do the necessary things. Those things can be done later. Let us, when you are at Rome, you behave like a Romans. Don't forget. Mm. Now the last thing is, okay, I don't know how you feel about high service. Wow. It's very important. Like, is high service good or not? The truth is, in the corporate world, don't suck up to your seniors. Don't do high service. The truth is your superiors yes, know. They know when you're doing a service. Yes. They you know when you're yourself. talking up to them. So if you feel like that is going to get you into their good books, no. you might just be wrong. Because then every employer, every employer wants someone who is dedicated, who they can trust. That if I'm not there, this person would do the work diligently. Not someone who they know that, oh, no, I, the person is doing this to please me. He's doing this so that they can get something. So don't stop doing that. All of those I say is What she's trying to tell you in an essence <laughs> is that don't be fake. You yes. have to be real. Mm. You have to be real. Everybody like a real person. You don't have to be fake. And do not forget, before I skip this aspect, whenever you attend a meeting, some don't go with their notepads and their pens. Uh, uh, it's okay. not corporate enough. It's not <laughs> professional. You have to go with You have to jot some points. Exactly. Your boss can tell you, can you imagine that? Everything I've been recording throughout the seminar, the thing just wiped away. Then I cannot have yours. I said, I did not record. Uh, okay, let me have your notepad. So I don't take anything there. Uh -huh. So what were you doing? I was listening. Listening. <laughs> so oh. you have to mm. hold your notepad and your pen in order to jot some important Things. Things. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, we all cannot rely on our memory. Sometimes yes. memory fails. So you need you need to go back to your book to be sure that, oh, I've uh, taken notes sure that you can. Yes. And of course, instruct, usually instructions are dished out in office meetings. Yes. So if you're not taking notes, how then do you know what That's you're supposed it. to do? The other thing is, please, treat everyone with dignity and respect. Yes. No matter the rank. The truth is, um, you can be someone's boss. It doesn't mean you should treat them with disrespect. Yeah. Everyone is human. We're first humans then before uh, grade levels and what have you set us apart. And then it does not mean that you are the ogre. Then you begin to treat the driver like the driver is trash. No. When you treat people with respect, I mean, you get that respect. But, and then it builds a form of cordial relation. The office space is supposed to be a space of, um, it's supposed to be a space that is peaceful. Yes. And not, and not um, an avenue of uh, backbiting, yes. anger, evil thoughts. I mean, of so course. the idea of people because fighting and uh, fighting, physical fight every day, they've turned the office to, to boxing ring. ring. No. When you treat people with respect, then they can, everybody can begin to operate the way they're supposed That's to just operate. It. Because in addition to that, you have to, that's what she's trying to tell us, <laughs> maintain your tone. 
mm. the pitch you're going to use on anybody. Some people are ready to leave your work. Don't let them damage your skin before leaving. Mm. Mm. Don't think you are a, a boss. See, they might actually, like, I watch a particular film, and that person used to threaten uh, the gates man. Not knowing that the gates man is actually the CEO of the company. And the manager do threaten the CEO, uh, the, uh, the, the gates man. So there are some situations whereby they will, they will just put somebody in, in, in low sector to just for you to know the humility in you. And these things uh, brings people's reputations to, to dump, or uh, to, to, the, to, the, to, to, the to trash, like, to, the, yeah. to the grass. We just have to maintain the way some people, they are, not, they are very, very bad at work. But I, I can't imagine when they get to their church, they'll pretend to be a saint and other things. See, the way we treat our pastors, the, the respect we give them. See, giving respect to your subordinates doesn't mean that you're you, lower. yes, there's a Yoruba adage says, even if you prostrate for a draft man, that doesn't mean you should become short. Exactly. So please let us just maintain the respect will be given everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, moreover, that doesn't mean we should not know our stand. Giving out people's respect, some can actually take it for granted. When you're giving some people respect, they might try like, okay, uh, am I, that's my boss now. That's how she or he relates to everybody. So you're trying to Maybe bring to disrespect. Yes, disrespect. Mm -hmm. Do not do that because he's just trying to bring you along, trying to drag you along. And don't make her or your boss feel, okay, you belong to this dustbin, you belong to this level. Mm -hmm. The way you place, please put yourself, put the, yeah. that's why I said it earlier, don't step toes. Some people can actually make you toeless. Please. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next thing. If you're in a workspace, it's a professional environment. You're expected to act professionally. Don't treat the office like you're, it's your family house. Yes. The office is the office. It is mm -hmm. not your family house. And the, what this, what this uh, implies is that your colleagues are not your brothers. They are not your sisters. They are not your husband. They are not your kids. So you don't treat them the way you treat your family members. So, and which is which has uh, covered all of the things we've been saying. That means you learn to treat them with respect. You can talk to your brothers, your sisters, anyhow, at home, and then family is still family. They will still embrace you and hug you. No, your colleagues are your colleagues. It's a professional environment. Treat them, accord them the, and then your level of uh, talking about professionalism. Your level of professionalism. You've studied. You've gone to school to study that thing yeah. that you're employed to do. You've been sent on training to do that thing that you're employed to do. to do. Then stop acting like you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of people who then you are they're in workspaces and you're like, ah. and then you are beginning to wonder, did you go to school at all? Because you have to practically <laughs> tell them everything Thing, to do. Yeah. And then clients will come and say, it's like you people don't know your job. I mean, I've, used, I've had clients use the word well, in some spaces over and over again. It makes me feel bad. Like, for if a client is telling you you don't know your job, then you're not professional. For example, when a, a receptionist left a cubicle lottering around the office, this thing happens among ladies most. Okay. But that, I think it's not 50-50. No, I like, think it's not 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> because what I said is not 50-50. I can't imagine. You know, we uh, we are woodpecker in nature. Hey, we sorry, are not woodpecker. Sorry to say. <laughs> because we can talk, we can talk, we like talking. Not everybody is extro extrovert, actually. Mm -hmm. But now, I now notice these things among guys, too. They would like to talk about their girlfriend, their wife, yeah. and they'll bring it. You you not, never meet them in their office. They will be lurking around. It's not your house. It's not from your dining to the kitchen, from your kitchen. See, this is your office. Maintain your space. Maintain your space. If you don't have anything to drink, if you have one gist or the other, there's time for, for break mm -hmm. when you go out, maybe during the lunch or something. Just get out of the office and make use of their time, please. The Stop office time is around. the office time. Mm -hmm. Takes us to the next thing. Don't use the office equipment or office hour for personal things. Now, there are a lot of people, they, okay, 
um, I'll use an industry because that was that's like the one that can come to mind immediately, and of course that's the that's where this thought emanates from the story I heard. In a publishing company, I mean, you work in a publishing company, so and you're good, you you know all of those things. Then you take a personal job to publish for someone personally, not the I mean, the office didn't get yeah. the job. You are doing it personally. I mean, everybody has to do side hustles now. Yes. We need to make money. And then you're using the office equipment. You've collected money mm. for that job. Now you're not using the office equipment. You're using the office paper, the office ah, printer, printer, the office yes. design. As in you're using the system to design and all of that. It is wrong. Vajela, can I ask, I ask you a question? Okay. Are you telling me I should not use office Wi-Fi? To download films no. for my pleasure, maybe it when I get it. It is wrong. Like, it Why? is one of the... See? I'm not watching the film uh, uh, in the office. People though. have lost their jobs for downloading Why? movies. It's just so the, the Wi-Fi wi wi now. Huh? The office Wi-Fi is for office work. So do not... See, do not use... If, <laughs> That's what people do say. You know, you know the, the thing is, some companies have... You don't know. Some companies have strong IT guys who can trail whatever it is you do on the internet. And it, it, it might come when the office is considering, uh, especially this time when they're trying to reduce the number of staffs and all of that. Then they begin to look for, okay, what has this person done? Yes, yes and that's the day they decide point. that, okay, let's go through their browse, his browse mm -hmm. history. And then yes. they realize that, oh, so you, how many gig have you spent downloading <laughs> movies? So you you put the whole company into debt. Even if you are if you are good at your work, they might just cut part of your salary and, and say, okay, we are we retrieve. I mean, you've spent so so a month on data to download movies that are not beneficial to this organization. Mm. Then they cut you off. And then for you that you've collected you collected money for your job and you're not doing it with office property. The first thing you should do as someone who is trying to do a side hustle apart from your main job, get all of this equipment. You're using it to get jobs. It's just like as uh, someone who has a block industry and then you want to be molding block but you don't want to buy all of the yes. equipment you need to mold block how are you going to mold you block say, yeah so you don't do that and i and recently i've heard i've heard people who do it now it's still a corporate world because it's business like uh sales reps now you're a sales rep they put you in a company then you bring your own and someone was telling me that the uncle's business is crashing they sell uh, soft drinks. I mean, yeah. They do it in wholesale. And then, so they realize that the sales rep has been getting... So she, she also gets from dealers. Then she sells her own products. Maybe the company has five uh, crates of whatever drink to sell. Then she brings four crates. Wow. Then she sells her own four crates first before selling the... The then company. Then the company realized, oh, people, are, oh, people are, they are not patronizing oh. us now. And then, of course, you still see your drinks. There's not like she's stealing. Yes. So, so it's not like, if it's missing, you know that it's missing. But it's so not you missing. are you using company there. name to sell your own To sell your own products. products. I mean, it is a wrong thing to do. It's so you, if you want to do your personal business, do it in a way that it's not affecting the company. If, if your personal gigs begin to affect the company, then your loyalty is no longer to the company. It, see, these are things that can make you lose your job. So if you, want to, if you want to start your own company, resign and start and, your own company. And moreover, this time around, I want to talk to the organization themselves. As an organization, you have to get a medical uh, you have to face the medical aspect when it comes to your staffs. Mm -hmm. So um, you can register under NHIS and blah blah blah. There are a lot of whatever. HMOs out there. Yes, please HMOs. Please just get them. It's not that you know they some some cannot stay in AC for a very long time, mm -hmm. and maybe the the place is stuffy and you have to run AC. If you don't want them to be getting sick all the time, you have to just make sure they are uh, utterly secure. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know that they will be looking up and down, and they will be even spending their salaries on no. their health and everything because we actually have some bosses they use you like. And they are not, they are not particular, particular about, about your health. They, they, they are very careless when it comes to health. Please, organizations will want us to do something about that. Yes, of course, uh, the health and welfare of your staff yes, are important. 
So you treat them with respect, Space. ensure that everyone is covered. I mean, auto insurance, if you, if you can afford it, give them access to loans so that they can also uh, yeah. live a balanced life. life. And that takes us to uh, the next one, which is uh, for employees. Mm. Treat the company's money as hmm. the company's money. Not as your own. The company's money is not your money. Mm -hmm. It is not as it is not something you shouldn't account for. So when the company's money is given to you, maybe you're a procurement officer or you're in charge of anything that needs you to have cash with you, always be accountable. It is company's money is no national cake. You know, you uh, you know, you see people say, ah, uh, you know, uh, a bit we will take our own now. It's not national cake. Yeah. The way you treat other people's business is the same way you treat your own business. I used to tell people in corporate affairs, you have to uh, apply this this keyword. I call it uh, tab off. Mm -hmm. when it What's that? To, yeah, you have to be truthful, a truthfulness, objectivity, accurate, uh, truthfulness, tab off, truthfulness, accuracy, balance, objectivity, and fairness. Mm. When it comes to money, if you know, we know ourselves, oh, if you know you cannot handle money, you're bad at handling money, please let us stop handling it and give it to another person much more responsible than us. And yes, and, and of course, uh, the thing is, talking about money, now, uh, you know, uh, Funshaw already said we know ourselves, so you know if you can uh, deal with money or not. Then again, the company's money is not something that you should use for personal deals. Some people, because they have access to the company money, then they feel like, oh, I, I'm borrowing from it. That oh, I'm borrowing, I'm going to repay it. You feel like, oh, you can, use, I can quickly use it to do some things. No, it is, it's, it is a form of, it is, it just shows that you cannot be trusted and you shouldn't be trusted, even if you are returning it. It's still a bad thing to do. Don't borrow from the company. Are you now telling me if I want to borrow money from the company now? Can't I ask my boss? You can. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I ask. It's passed from no, no. Apart ask. from no. Don't take Just it. dip your hand. I mean, you know, there's some, there's some organizations where they trust some set of people with monies. I mean, uh, there's a safe where people can get money to oh, run operation. And then you feel like, oh, because they are not using it you now. Need four money. They are not using it now. Uh -huh. yeah. Four money. Four money. Let me quickly use it that to kind of run some things. Then I will repay back next week. It is wrong. See, the, the truth is, once you start, you never stop. Hmm. And then the day you are going to take bigger money, and the day you are going to feel like, oh, no, I can take it. And then you don't want to return. It's going to happen. So don't be, don't allow, don't allow greed. That means you have to take you. your eyes off some things. Just yeah. think, okay, what if the money is not there? How are you going to cope? How are you going to, so. so let's just learn how to take our mind and oh. our eyes off those things that have to do with something that can dent our image. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> this is what you talk about, our corporate etiquette. But then... That this is where we'll be drawing the cuts, and we're hoping that you know, I keep saying it that these rules are many. So, but by the time we keep saying one or two things, then you begin to remember all of the things you're supposed to follow, all of the rules you're supposed to follow. Then you begin to also ask yourself, What are the things I've been doing wrong? How can I begin to do it better? You see, you even have more episodes to talk, and so of course, uh, on, on some other, you just have to stay tuned, <laughs> stay tuned. So, on corporate etiquette, ensure that whatever it is you're doing do it diligently the way you treat like i said it earlier the way you treat another person's business that's the same way you're going to treat your own, own business. business if you end up becoming a business owner and then keep it at the back of your mind what if i'm the one putting money into this business well i want it to fail well i want this company to you fail rip. so be responsible to your workspace mm -hmm. <laughs> so from my side, ah, uh, I don't feel like going, but I believe we still have yeah. more news <laughs> of this epi etiquette. I do write it on my social media. I said, welcome to month of perfection, month of July, month of, of etiquette. etiquette. <laughs> That's what I used to tell people. And from my side, I don't just want to say goodbye, but I want you to stay safe. Mm -hmm. I want you to use your nose mask. The sanitizer is important.
want the cold weather is there please stay warm stay warm you can see me putting on gin it's not because i like gin like that but because of the weather is very very cold and you can see Adela. <laughs> what she's putting on because she doesn't oh, yeah. so because this is this COVID, today, this, yes, this covid symptoms so my for my side i will be saying stay tuned next week we'll be meeting on the same program ladies lunch by 8 p.m don't forget to subscribe don't forget we are here if you want to advertise we want more sponsor i remain loyal your phone she babe full sure i follow good night for my ends and of course, I remain your one and only Adiola Adeguke. Follow me on all of our social media platforms at Midday Crown. And of course, you can follow Ladies Lounge at NFT Ladies Lounge on Instagram. Watch more episodes on YouTube, different television broadcasts. Don't just watch, like, comment, share, share. subscribe. And let us know that you're there with our WhatsApp us. Too is our, there. our WhatsApp is there. We appreciate everyone who has been contributing at the discussions on the WhatsApp page. You have been giving us comments, your feedbacks, what you would like us to change, and uh, what you would like us to talk about. And uh, for those sending in topics already, I've, I've told you guys we are keeping all those topics for the coming months, and we will, of course, deliver of course. the way you want us to deliver. But that's too much of it again on this episode of Ladies Live. Have a lovely, lovely night. Bye. <laughs>